I'm glad everybody's feeling a little wild tonight. Yeah. Emerald Lagasse, welcome to Emerald Live. And, uh, you know, I love to get wild and crazy when I cook. <laughs> I've even been known to yell a little BAM once in a while there, yeah. brother. Yeah. Yeah. You know? We got a... Oh, we got a big show for you tonight, folks, because nothing inspires me more than food from the wild. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, speaking about wild, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. Everybody on the wild thing tonight, folks, right here on Emerald Live. Thing. How's everybody doing tonight? Everybody all right? Yeah. Welcome. I got my friends here from New Orleans. So glad that you guys are here. Jay, come on over here. Let's tell the folks what we got on the wild menu tonight here. We're going to start with a little mixed green salad with roasted baby beets, green apples, and wild spring onions. Ooh. La la. And then we're going to take them all down to New Orleans for a little duck and wild mushroom gumbo. Yeah. And then you're probably just going to think I'm absolutely crazy with this next dish. But I'm going to uh, show you about wild boar. Yeah. We, got, we found one in the subway tonight. <laughs> and uh, we last sued him up and uh, brought him in here. Kicked him in the horns a little bit, you know? <laughs> so we're gonna uh, wild boar him with wild blueberry sauce and some garlic braised dandelion greens. What do you think of that, Jay? And who knows else? You know, we got the crew from New Orleans. You never know what's gonna happen here. So we're gonna get started. How you ladies doing, all right? Thanks. Okay, look, here's what we're gonna do. Spring is in the air. Is it for you? Yes. You sure? Okay. Now, what starts happening is spring onions begin to start happening first. Oh, yeah, babe. And then the spring onions sort of go into the Vidalia onion season, which then goes into the sort of Texas onion season, and then goes into the Creole onion season, and we just have a lot of onions. <laughs> So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, make a little salad. But first, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to sort of trim up these uh, spring onions a little bit. Not, uh, you want to leave. See, they've got a good firm part of these here. Can you see that, you? See, look at this. We got, it's nice and firm, plenty of flavor in there. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put them in some olive oil, a little salt and pepper, take the ends off and uh, just sort of let those marinate a little bit, get nice and tasty. Doc, are you uh, sort of in the uh, wild mood tonight there? Yeah, man, I'm feeling very wild. You are, <laughs> oh. Well, that's good. That's good. That's really, really, really good. Great. <laughs> and how about the boys? Are they feeling a little frisky oh, tonight, too? Out of our minds, out of yeah. our minds. Yeah. I, I just, <laughs> out of your minds. Did I tell you Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Bands in the house? Now, this, uh, the other thing that uh, spring has sprung, I love these, beets. Got to wash them really good. Now, here's what turns people off. What turns people off is they think you got to peel the beets. Well, if you have these, like, little baby beets like this, if you wash them, you got little vegetable brush. You don't have to get all, like, 
your hands all funkied up, either, you know, red or yellow or whatever color. Wash them good. And what we're going to do is we're going to clean these up. Also toss them with olive oil, and we're going to start roasting the beets in the oven. While the beets are roasting in the oven, we're going to take these spring onions that I'm going to marinate a little bit more with some extra virgin olive oil and a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some cracked pepper here. And I think what we'll do with these, since they're nice and marinated, is get those just on the grill because I like this sort of little charred taste of the spring onion. So the beets are going in the oven. The uh, spring onions are on the grill. When we come back, I'll show you how we're going to finish the salad. Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Lab. <laughs> things tonight. <laughs> spring has sprung. You got ramps. You got spring onions. We got these baby beets. We've got all kinds of wild things. Now, let me just tell you, I decided to put this on the uh, grill um, whole. And also, um, you can cover them and sort of trap. You can, you can put them in a smoker. That would work really well. You can also cut them in half uh, where the cooking time will be less which I have right here. Now, when the baby beets, which I absolutely love, are done, you want to take them out, and you're going to let them cool a little bit, and I'm going to come back to that in a second. Now, um, I'm thinking about components of this wild spring onion and baby beet salad, and I get a little goat cheese that comes to mind. Ooh. Yeah, just, mmm. <laughs> little pine nuts. Uh, that uh, during the commercial break, we just sort of in a skillet, sort of toasted them so they got good and brown, and now all the oil is out of there. And I thought a great combination with beets are apples. So I have a little Granny Smith apple that I peeled and just diced. So I have those components now. And uh, now I'm ready to, uh, to make a little dressing to go with this to, to help it. So I'm going to start with shallot. Uh, you could have uh, red onion. Uh, a little bit of garlic in here would be nice. Uh, and then uh, what we got here is a little bit of Dijon mustard. A little, uh, you could use a whole grain mustard too. That's sort of going to be uh, a factor of uh, just kind of holding it together. Apple cider vinegar. You know, it just doesn't have to be balsamic. <laughs> Everybody's on a balsamic kick. I love balsamic, but you know... There are other vinegars out there, folks. <laughs> it's amazing. Try Sherry. She's always good. <laughs> or apple cider. We'll just, you know. Then uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to take and have a little bit of uh, orange concentrate or a little reduced orange juice. Really, really, really just impact flavor there. Uh, of course, a little fresh ground pepper goes a long way for me. And a little salt also. Okay, now. Now is when you want to go and get that extra virgin stuff. Okay? I mean, there's regular oil, there's the regular olive oil. But something like this for a good salad dressing, now you slowly drizzle in. We're not going to use a lot. We're not using, like, a whole bottle. We're just going to drizzle some good olive oil in here. Get a nice balance between the acidity of the orange juice, the mustard, and then also now the extra virgin olive oil. You know, one of the things that really comes to mind, folks, that really is helpful when you're doing this sort of thing is taste the food. <laughs> you know, geez, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, you wait to the end, it's too late. Ooh la la. <laughs> All right.
Now, here comes the rough part. The beets. So, the beets get roasted. I have some already peeled. You got to peel them. Sometimes, like, when I don't want to get all that stuff, hey, I just eat the peel. <laughs> hey, roughage, you know what I mean? <laughs> Let it rip, baby, you know? <laughs> well, it's true, Rhoda. <laughs> I'm not a fibber. <laughs> so, if you don't want to do that, and, you see, when you start peeling them like this, you see... Your hands, you see what happens here? That's why, for me, I have a lot of doctor friends. <laughs> I go into the doctor's office, he's not looking, I get a few of these things right here. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, look. <laughs> they come a thousand in a box, he ain't counting these. They're counting the bloody aspirin, let me tell you, but not these things right here. So I just put a few of these in my pocket like that. When I go home, honey, I got the beets covered. Don't worry about it. And then I just start peeling them away like this, you see? And look. Oh, everybody's happy. You see that? Everybody's smiling. Look at this. Look at how they work. Oh, baby, look at this. All right, I got this one. Let's try the red one. We're having so much fun right now. Look at this. Oh, yes. And then again, if it doesn't work, have the roughage. <laughs> now, you got to try to get these things off here. See, I'm beatless. <laughs> When you're ready and clean, now what you do is you just add a little bit of those grilled onions like that, some of the beets. If you want to cut them, go ahead. We're going to add the cheese. Want to break it up? Go ahead, break it up. Come on, it's not rocket science. Add the, uh, the apples in here, the pine nuts. All right, fresh ground pepper. Beautiful. Salt. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And then we have a little bit of the dressing like that. And then now you go in and easy. Look, what did it do to you? <laughs> Slowly, you just toss ever so lightly. Oh, yes. <laughs> then you just take and plate this wonderful salad with the beets and the spring onions and the goat cheese, and the pine nuts. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, right there. A little salad of that, huh? Whoa. In Louisiana, we have a uh, duck season, Mississippi. See, in, you know, when it gets a little colder, we don't have a lot to do down there, so we just go shoot things. <laughs> like birds and stuff, you know? What are you doing this weekend? Ah, going duck hunting. And uh, if not, you can get some wonderful ducks. But let me tell you something. This is a fantastic gumbo that I want to show you. If you get one thing, we're going to start in a little Dutch oven with a little oil. And we're going to season the skin side first of some duck that I just put in pieces. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just start browning the duck skin side down to begin to start cooking the meat, okay? When we come back, there is a trick to this gumbo called the roux, because the gumbo itself is really, really easy. But this gumbo is absolutely delicious. You don't want to miss it. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs! <laughs>
good, Chef. I'm gonna let you take over. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. Dog gives, everybody. Oh, man. <laughs> Welcome back. Little gumbo for uh, my New Orleans friends in the house. Good to have you all there, folks. Yes, indeed. Okay, look, so you really want to brown that duck real good. And then when the, br uh, when the duck gets good and brown, render that fat down. It's all good. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the duck out of here. And then the next important thing is the roux. Now, if you got the roux down, you got the gumbo. You got it. Doesn't matter what kind. Wooden spoon. Got the, uh, the drippings in there. Now we're going to add flour. See how much we got in here. And you want to start slowly stirring this roux up. Now, it shouldn't be too thick. Let me tell you, the biggest mistake people make with the roux, they got the heat on too high. Basically, you got to keep stirring this thing about medium heat. And it takes about 20, 25, 30 minutes, depending on the color that you're looking for. For this hearty style gumbo, duck and mushroom, basically it takes about two beers. By the time you can drink two beers, the roux is like perfect. Now, if you, you know, you don't have a timer, you can always do that. So, 25 minutes later or two beers, this is what the roux looks like. You see how nice dark chocolatey this is here? Beautiful, huh? Look at that. All right? It's all in the roux. Once that roux gets to that color, gets to that point, now it's the next bit of the foundation. What that is is the trinity. And that is, we're going to have onions, celery, and bell pepper. Oh, yeah, I happen to have red today. Fancy. All right? So now we have that. The seasonings for this first foundation. Very simple. A couple of bay leaves. Cayenne pepper. A little thyme. A little garlic. Yeah. Now, we're going to cook this for about 8 to 10 minutes, these vegetables, getting these flavors in here. Once that happens, okay, we're going to add one beer. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> we're going to add some wild and exotic mushrooms, which I have here. We're going to add the duck pieces back in and some stock. We're going to bring it to a boil and let it simmer. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around. Doc it. Joining us, Emma Lagasse here, finding out where the wild things are. And, uh, yeah, we had a little wild salad. Wow. And uh, speaking about that, just give you a little update back on the uh, duck and wild mushroom gumbo. If you're just joining us, we made that terrific roux. It's all in the roux. We added the trinity, salt, cayenne, bay leaf, thyme. That's the seasoning. First foundation. And uh, we cooked that roux with the Trinity for about 8 to 10 minutes uh, after browning the duck, which we took out. We added uh, some dock chicken stock or light chicken broth or whatever you have. That bouillon stuff, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's, anyhow. And you want to bring it up to a simmer and simmer it for a good hour and 15 minutes or so. 
because it's got to cook that roux out now, okay? You can see I got the lid on. Most people don't know when to put the lid on. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I bought a set of cookware, 10 pieces. I had three lids in there. <laughs> well, they're important. When you uh, want to use your lid, it's for a reason. You see here, no lid. Evaporation. See, all of Manhattan is getting happy right now. <laughs> but there are times when you're cooking things that you want to lit it to trap the evaporation so that you get concentration. <laughs> Thank you very much. That cost me $72,000. <laughs> now, <clears throat> the duck pieces after that some of them are going to stop falling apart. That's okay. Sometimes I like to add on Dewey sausage in there. Sometimes not. You can use other smoked sausage. Depends what kind of mood I'm in. I got about five or six different types of mushrooms. I got the duck in there. This has now been simmering for about an hour and a half. It's going to be at least an hour and a half, two hours, folks, before you're going to get a good gumbo. As I said about the duck pieces, look. See, look. You see how they're starting to fall off the bone? So... This is a more rustic kind of Louisiana-style gumbo. So sometimes I leave the pieces in there because I got friends that just want to eat the pieces. And then I got ladies that just, like, don't want to fuss with that. So that's when I take some of the meat off the bones and just put it right in there. Now, you don't want to cook this and cook it and cook it and cook it, whether it's chicken or duck, because then it's just going to shred. And then it looks like... Bad chicken and dumplings. You ever have that? No? Huh. Oh, I'm not going to go there, but... Now, before you serve your family or friends, it's always good to go back and taste to see if you have to re-season. Because we already seasoned. Now we got to re-season. You wait to the end, it's too late. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh. Ray, you're going to like this one, I tell you that. Now, for me, to serve this, very, very, very simple. Sorry, you. We're going to go in. Get a nice... Oh, look at this gumbo, huh? Oh, yes, baby. Now, we would always, in New Orleans, serve this with steamed rice. So now we would get a little rice. And the question then comes, well, what about filet? Well, I like to serve filet on the side, unless I am having filet gumbo. Little parsley and the little green onions and a little of that essence stuff. Bam! That's it. They have it like that. There you have it. Little duck wild mushroom gumbo. I told you earlier I was going to serve some wild boar. People really don't quite understand, or I shouldn't say. People are really starting to understand wild boar. We've been serving wild boar in the restaurants for 15, 20 years. And there are a lot of farms, uh, a lot of them in Texas. Um, they're much bigger than regular hogs. They're much meaner, too. Uh, but they're really, really tasty. And uh, just consider it as just a, a little bit bigger hog. <laughs> you know, if that wild thing scares you. So I take pancetta, or you can use regular bacon, pancetta being Italian bacon, or you could use whatever Irish bacon or whatever with a little olive oil, and I render that down. And in the spring, uh, and also in the fall, there's a, there's a small season of these, but particularly in the spring, there's these things called dandelion. 
Yeah, and people don't, you know, they look at them and, I don't know, they bring them to their ponies or something. I, I don't, <laughs> but they're really, really tasty. They kind of taste a little bit like a spinach. They're really good for you. So after the pancetta is, uh, is sort of done that, I take some slivered garlic like this now, and I add that in there so until the garlic can start getting a little, a little color. And um, once that happens, I, I'll come back and add just a little bit of sugar because this is a little bit bitter like arugula, but yet it has that nice flavor like spinach. And, um, and then I'll add just a little bit of vinegar in there and really just start cooking that pancetta and that garlic. And then while that's happening, I just take the dandelion and I just sort of lay them in there and um, come back with a little salt. <laughs> you guys aren't with the dandelion police up there, are you? <laughs> Ladies, everything okay there? <laughs> I hope none of my dandelions got loose. <laughs> you sure everything's all right up there? <laughs> Sir, you're looking mighty red. <laughs> are you the vulture there? Please, sir, keep it G. <laughs> now, we're gonna cook this dandelion. We're gonna slowly lower this heat right here. Then, another great thing that I did is I got some white beans. If you don't wanna cook them, you can buy them, or cannoli beans, and I love these things, and they're so good. My kids love them, too. And I take them and add a little chicken stock to that, and a little salt. Mm -hmm and extra virgin olive oil, and uh, my friend Ray's here, so I gotta add some garlic in here, yeah. uh, and a little bit of uh, fresh ground pepper, and then while the dandelion greens are going like that, I'm gonna just puree these white beans or these cannelloni beans. Now look, if they're looking too thick, you can always just add a little bit more olive oil. It's really good for you. Now. Pureed white beans, dandelion greens. When we come back, I'll show you what we're going to do with them. Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Island Band. Welcome back, cooking wild now. Duck and wild mushroom gumbo in the air. All right, speaking about wilds, I was a little surprised at how big these wild boar chops are. Yeah, you can see we had uh, some folks uh, during the commercial break saying, well, how come it's not like the other white meat? You know, they're not just as pink. And uh, that's because uh, they're wild, and they're a little bit bigger. And the bigger that they're going to get, uh, the more uh, the more that they're going to uh, they're going to grow, and, and that's why the flesh is like that. But wanna, I'm going to tell you, they are absolutely delicious. I'm going to simply just put a little bit of oil on these chops, and um, I'm going to uh, use a little bit of essence. Is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to oh yeah, babe, I'm going to use some essence. And uh, start on that one side, and then we'll go right in uh, on the grill here. Now, you could pan sear these, and I, and I generally would, but when I saw the size of these things, I told Vince and Andre, or our chefs, that uh, we better go to the grill here. Uh, plus, I'm kind of like getting that, um, kind of feeling like that, you know, it's spring is sprung, and I'm kind of getting that, like I want that smoky feeling a little bit, you know, like the grill or the smoker. All right, so I'm going to uh, kind of wash the hands here so the boar police, <laughs> they don't get all crazy. And, uh, and I'm going to recap a couple of things to you. Now, 
we're going to definitely go and uh, season uh, the other side as well of these. Oh, don't worry. We used to, in the old days, the old Emerald Live studios, uh, when we would grill something like this, basically, uh, you'd have to get a pair of goggles uh, when, you, uh, when you came. So uh, if you come to the, to the front door of the studio in the old days, uh, they would ask you. These days, they ask you to say, hey, you don't mind if we frisk you? You got any, you know, weapons? You know, back then it was... Uh, Excuse me, ma'am, today we're grilling. Can you wear these goggles? <laughs> but uh, we don't have that to worry about anymore because now in the new studio here, you can see way up there in the sky, we got these little white boxes all over the place. You see them up there, folks? And you just see, and all the smoke goes out into Manhattan now, just like that. <laughs> yep, unbelievable. All right, so, yeah, we got the wild boar chops going on here. And, uh, oh, yeah, look at that, babe. We're just going to... Oh. And just because they're wild doesn't mean that uh, you also uh, have to uh, cook them well done. Uh, I think a good uh, 135, 145 degrees is great. I really slowed down our dandelion greens here, okay? And uh, then I have the white bean puree that we did. With the olive oil and uh, a little bit of stock, we're going to taste that. Make sure that... Wow. <laughs> so now, we're going to take that aside. Really, really good, folks. If you... Not only is this good for, like, a dip, um, this is, like, a quick way to, like, to make hummus... Put it on pita bread. Good for breakfast as well. But a great, easy uh, dip if you're in a pinch. You know, you got folks that just pop in. You know, you always love that. <laughs> Sunday afternoon, you know, just getting comfortable. Horn rings. Army trucks outside. 20 people get off. <laughs> hey, you got anything to eat? Oh, sure. So now we got the white bean puree. And uh, the dandelion greens, we're going to turn these chops here. You know, a lot of times, it's amazing to me how many times on that www.foodnetwork.com that I get uh, requests for, like, quick and easy sauces. You know, I cook chicken for my family three, four times a week, salmon, et cetera, et cetera. I'm, like, just a little tired of uh, olive oil and lemon you know, which is perfectly good for you. Here's one of those quick and easy ones that I'm going to do with this wild boar or pork, or you could do it with chicken. Buy these wild blueberries. They come frozen in these fancy stores. Or you could just use regular frozen blueberries or fresh blueberries. I'm going to start with a little bit of, um, with a little bit of shallot and a little garlic uh, with, a little, with a little bit of butter in this saucepan right here. Just real quick. And uh, we're going to get that, get that started real quick. And then, believe it or not, I was teasing earlier about different vinegars. Uh, and really and truly, expand the mind a little bit. There's so many different delicious vinegars out there that you can apply it to. But I'm going to go back to... Um, this is sage. You could use dry. I'm going to go back to the old balsamic vinegar. So I'm putting balsamic vinegar in here, and I'm going to let that start reducing. Oh, what happened? You got disappointed? <laughs> I built you up, and all of a sudden, I let you down. I'm sorry. Now we're going to add those blueberries. And, uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add just a little bit of reduced beef broth or beef stock to that with these blueberries. And we're going to let this sort of cook down. So we got dandelion greens and white bean puree. We got wild boar chops just looking, oh, ever so good. And when we come back, folks, I'm going to show you how to put the whole thing together. Stick around. <laughs>
Whoa! 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 All right, look at these board shops. Now, they're in a home stretch. While we were on a little break, I uh, took a little bit of potato. And uh, these are looking mighty fine. Took a little diced potato here and dropped them in here for something in New Orleans that we call sort of Brabant potatoes. They're just a fried potato. I'm going to do a little different, uh, different deal to them. White bean puree, dandelion greens. Don't panic when you're cooking these kind of things like spinach or broccoli rabe and you've got multiple components going like that. Don't worry, just turn it off. Just turn it off. Now I'm ready. And uh, so now I'm going to wake it up. A little olive oil. Oh, yeah. It's awake. A little salt down there. <laughs> then we'll turn the heat back on and bring that up to temperature. So we got that going on. We don't want to overcook the board chops. We want them to rest a little. These guys right here, nah, I don't like that. See, I can do that because it's my show. <laughs> These guys right here are done, and I don't want to overcook them because there's nothing like, you know, too well done wild boar. This one here needs another minute. Ray, that's probably yours there. That's a big one. Now, we have got these Brabants right here. Take a little towel here. Oh, yeah, drain them real good. Oh, look at this. Now, you see these guys here are ready to be seasoned. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to take a little garlic like this. And then we're going to take these Brabants in there like that. And a little bit of uh, parsley like that. A little bit of uh, green onions. And we're just going to... Oh, yeah. And we're going to season these guys up a little bit. Now we'll turn that off. The blueberry sauce is looking mighty fine. All right. So now I'm about ready to just sort of put this together. I got a little bit of fresh herbs here. You, I'm just gonna go like that inside there and uh, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna uh, take a little bit of white bean puree there and there and there and there and there and a uh, little wild boar chop there and there and there and there and then we're going to go and uh, see how our herbs are doing here. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Little assortment of fresh herbs right there. And uh, we'll season them up. Then uh, we're just going to come for the old Brabant potatoes. And why be shy? Just kind of do one of those things like that. And then I've got the dandelion greens here. They're looking just mighty, mighty, mighty fine. So. Those dandelion greens, they're just going to kind of go over here like that. And these kind of going to go just over here like this over here, those dandelion greens. And then I'm going to come back over here for the blueberry sauce. And I'm going to hit them a little bit right there with the blueberry sauce like that. And then after the blueberry sauce like that, we're just going to sprinkle just a little lemon right on that herb salad like that. And we're going to take those fried herbs and we're going to do that. And there you have it, folks, right there, a little bit of wild boar chops. Are y'all feeling wild? Hey, I want to thank my friends from New Orleans for being here tonight. I want to thank all of you. I'm Emma Lagasse. See you next time.